tonight we have a rare chance to discuss a subject that I've always been wanting to discuss on YouTube. Uh, I have obtained over the years the pretty much every volume of SCTV. And why did I buy them? I did not buy them because I liked the comedy. I liked it because when the show was on the air back in 1983 and 84, you would always see mentions in TV guides some weeks about a big TV special on SCTV, uh, a 3D special. And I couldn't get SCTV from where I lived in Florida. So it was on one of these really low power stations and it was not, as far as I remember, it was never aired on NBC as far as you could not pick it up from where I lived because otherwise I probably would have tried to get some of the shows. I think it was on a, a, a low power UHF station in Tampa. So I have now had a chance finally to uh, get all of the scenes of the shows that were in 3D and uh, I'm going to try to highlight at least in the visuals you see here next to me of uh, the different uh, SCTV videos that were done over the years. Now to begin with up front I'm going to say this none of the shows were ever filmed in 3D none of them. It was a gimmick and I know people are going to say that off the top they're going to say it was never real they just did it because they thought well this would have this would entice people to want to watch it. So they, they figure, we'll say it's 3D and we'll show the scenes and it's, it's going to be funny because they're going at you like this and all the rest of it. Well, I really believe they were airing it in 3D because I never got to see them. So I thought, here's another chance I've lost. I can't see it. So I'm going to show you in this box those shows that were in 3D uh, that they said were 3D. And at least give you a chance to maybe see a few little hints here and there of what it would have looked like in three dimension when um, they were airing it on television. The first one is I remember it was the uh, Dr. Tongue's house of um, another one of them was the house of stewardesses. One was the laughable house of pancakes. Um, they did a 3D line, which is basically Dr. Uh, or Count, uh, Count Floyd went on television with uh, the cast from one of the movies. I think it was a re, they were redoing the Urban Cowboy. And uh, they, again, it was a parody. That was the intention of the entire, of the entire thing was to imply they were doing this or doing that and they were making a, a three-dimensional film. And in every single sketch that they did of any of the 3D things of SCTV, they would always have um, John Candy or um, Gene Levy as Tobias, um, Tobias Jr. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember everybody's names. Um, they would hold something and they just do this. You know, and I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, what would that have looked like in 3D? And then I found out none of them were made in 3D. It was just a gimmick. That's all it was ever intended to be was a gimmick. So I finally had the opportunity to do really good graphics, you know, doing backdrops, doing um, certain things with what software I have. And I've actually created analog 3D of all of those different scenes. Not the whole episode, okay? I'm just doing little excerpts because I want everybody to be able to see what these things would have looked like in 3D when they were actually airing them. And uh, as you know on YouTube you cannot show the whole scene because they're going to say it's copyrighted if you do it. So I'm going to show it in a little small backdrop type thing, you know? And if you do it smaller, it could be possible that the 3D process might even look real or even better. Um, there are some shows, for example, there was Dr. Tongue's uh, House of Cats. I never could find that. 
And then I found out that somebody had posted it on uh, YouTube. These are like the very last shows that SCTV made. And that's why they're not in those DVD volumes that they had available for people to buy. There were five volumes. And I thought when I was buying them, these are all the different seasons. It's not. It was just excerpts of all the shows they aired. And they did five volumes. Five volumes were made. And so what I did is I looked for all of the shows that had anything to do with 3D. Now, I'm going to say this. Count Floyd is the only main sketch they ever used as the premise for these 3D show uh, gimmicks. It was never done anywhere else except that Count Floyd himself would say, uh, see the 3D movie coming up, and it had to do with these horror hosts, you know, like Sven Gulli and Dr. Paul Bear and all these other people. They did those kinds of gimmicks back in the 80s, you know. So with Count Floyd, it was sort of like the uh, pseudonym of saying, well, this is going to be a humorous thing because we're making fun and poking fun at the horror hosts that were doing these things. Zachary in New York had his own horror show. Uh, so, you know, all these other people were just different cities in the United States who had known horror shows that they had a host to introduce the show with, and then it was, you know, it was just to entertain kids, really. And so that's what they figured they would do. We'll, we'll get people interested because it's going to look so much like a horror show uh, that some television low power station would have aired. And that's true. All these stations were on uh, UHF stations uh, on low power. And uh, all these horror hosts would air these things because they, they knew, hey, you know, we have fan base all over the country. We'll have to try to do this to make it look real. And so that's what they did. And, uh, but, uh, you know, when I saw them listed in TV Guide and they kept saying, SCTV does 3D Spectacular tonight or whatever, and you're thinking, oh, I can't see it. I can't see that show. And so over the years, I always thought, if I ever can find SCTV on video, I want to see those Dr. Tongue house of whatever, you know, or whatever they did in 3D. I wanted to see them, even if I couldn't see it in 3D. But um, then to find out it was a gimmick, it's like all of that publicity they did and for nothing, except that they just wanted to gain more ratings for the fans to watch it because you're thinking there's never uh, an opportunity they couldn't just kind of like squeeze or, or insert something into it that's different from any of the other shows. So you would think every week if they said we're going to do a 3D program, it could have been in 3D and you never would have known that. So, um, I did a video on my channel not too long ago. It's, a, it's called A History of Three-Dimensional Television, and I started in 1952 to 2016. If you haven't seen it, you should, because what I did is I went from the very beginning movie of Bawana Devil. I have a copy of that movie, and I ain't saying where I got it, but it was not in 3D uh, when they released it on video. So I took certain key points, like when the lions were attacking, and I, I used the 3D processor and I made them in 3D. And I, I did that as my opening sequence. Then I switched and I went on to other films that's been on television since, like Hondo. Hondo was aired in 1993. Uh, one time it was sponsored by the Leukemia Society of America. It's never been aired since. That's been 24 years later. They've never aired it again. They've released it on video, but they have never marketed it in 3D since they aired it on television. And I found out as they were getting ready to do this that they had aired it before. But it was like back in the 60s, I think, they aired it in the 60s. Could have been late 60s, early 70s, they aired it on television again. That was the very first time they ever aired it. And doing it in 94 or 93, that was going to be the last time they would air it. In other words, the John Wayne estate said, we're going to allow it to be aired one more time in 3D, and that's going to be the last time we show it. And they have never done it again since. So 3D is so popular, but so rare to see it on television. It's just astronomical. High definitions here. What would it look like if they could air an actual three-dimensional program on television that 
was made in 3D from the analog back in the 50s. Gorilla at Large was aired in 86 all over the United States in 3D. They did it maybe twice. And then it was pulled. You've never seen it on television again. Um, Revenge of the Creature. I was so lucky. Channel 2 and ABC affiliate here in Atlanta, they aired it back in 1982, 83, somewhere around there. I didn't have a VCR then, so I couldn't record it. And then when I moved up here, I had a VCR and they aired it again. They aired it a second time. So I got that on, on tape. And, you know, you think, oh, big deal. Well, you can't see these things as they were really intended to be aired in, 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 in 3D because analog was so fuzzy and half the time you couldn't watch it because the signal was never clear enough to get a really, really good experience of seeing 3D. And so now after 20, 30 years after the fact, it's like the technology has has given us the opportunity to get so many things to high definition, but nobody who has the rights to these shows will probably ever think or consider airing them on television or even releasing them on video because I guess they figure ah, it wouldn't look real anymore. Well, they're wrong because I guarantee you, if you could air it on high definition television, it would probably be the most crystal clear opportunity to see that three dimensional process coming out of that screen. But they'll probably never do it. So, I'm sorry I didn't really get to explain or describe everything on the screen behind me. But I did want you to know that I'm interested in SCTV only because of them emphasizing at certain points in the show's history that they were doing three-dimensional specials. And I know now they're gimmicks. They were never intended or ever aired in 3D. But maybe maybe y'all have had a chance to experience it through watching what I've posted here today. So. Uh, what can I tell you? I appreciate allowing y'all or y'all watching this, and I hope you get some fascination or interest out of it, like I have. And uh, if ever again any television stations air 3D programming from the 50s, they ought to air the same ones they've aired before. Because what a chance to see an actual three-dimensional program aired in high definition. Because you know, you've got a totally new generation of kids out there who have never experienced seeing a three-dimensional movie on television. And if you can see it in high definition, it would blow your mind to see how real those older analog 3D movies are outstanding. That's why I recorded them when I had a chance to see them on television. So, you can do a search on my channel. You can see all the other things I've done about different 3D movies. But uh, this is sort of like uh, the ultimate opportunity to share with you other things that I have been interested in myself, and that's SCTV's uh, gimmicks about three-dimensional television. So thank you for this chance to share with you, and I hope if you get a chance, you'll watch some of my other videos. Thank you.